Okay, I'm back. I just saw I put just a light coat of paint on there, probably something that's going to rub off, but that's all right. No big deal. Just preference of putting it on in the first place. I got a stud in there, and the stud is in there for for a reason, uh, and I'll explain as we go along. But this is what I do with all of my studs. Now this is going to be going against all what you you old timers have always done, and. Uh, I'm hoping that it'll still be okay. But this is what I done. Now I've taken Permatex NECs. And boy, this is some real good stuff. But let me tell you, you get that on your hands or you get it on your clothes, it's not going to come off your clothes. And using the portable sink that I told you about with the Don Soap will take it right off and you can you can go right in and eat lunch. So don't worry about that. But anyway, don't try not to get it in your clothes. But if you're doing a job like this, <clears throat> try to use your oldest clothes that you don't give a crap about because this is a messy job. And I'm not going to lie to you about it. So <clears throat> anyway, get this ADC. You're going to really like it. It costs around $10. That's what this costs. All my new studs, they cost me $11 a piece. The nuts cost $5.40 a piece. And I went online and it cost a whole heck of a lot more than that. I had to search around and found a guy that, that sold to me for this price that I need. And the, the two reasons that you probably would uh, change your studs out, as I told you before, is they may not be long enough for putting on aluminum wheels, or they, the studs may be damaged from uh, either hitting with a hammer or a tool or stretched with a one-inch gun. And if you see somebody with a one-inch gun, kick them right straight in the testicles. They don't, don't let them put a gun on you. I'm just telling you, what I, that's why I had to uh, change up mine, all of mine here. Now just figure out how much that costed. It's good. I guess it's a little over $200 per wheel all the way around that I had to do. So you can see that it's not cheap. And uh, I'm only trying to give you uh, just a couple of tips here. Uh, so if you do change them out, make sure that nobody ever touches them again other than yourself. So anyway, <clears throat> this Permatex I put on here, this is the part of the stud that comes in from the back. This is the part that actually seats into the, uh, the little wheel hub here. And as you see, it's got serrations in it all the way around. Well, so does the, so does the, the hub itself, but they're, real, they're not real deep, but they're just enough where these, when you put the stud in, it'll, it'll like try to find the least resistance and, and then the, you can't turn the stud anymore and that's where the best position is to uh, to try to put the, the stud into the uh, the wheel hub but anyway I, I give this a little help I give it a lot of help and you're going to see why I give it uh, coat the part that's going to be going in into the, the seating area make sure make sure you, you get this chamfer area right here okay now don't worry about putting this stuff all on everybody oh you're gonna you're supposed, they're supposed to be put together dry and all oh, that's BS. Anyway, I've been an assembler for all my life, for crying out loud. Now, I'm going to wash it off the threads, and I'll show you that. I'm going to put some on the threads, but I'm also going to wash it off after I get all done. And you'll see step by step what I've done. And so, to, to make these guys relax a little bit, and make sure you got the right stud. <laughs> I got an R on here, as you can see. That's, that's for the right side here. And uh, real easy, if you don't keep them separated, to put the wrong one in, and, and you've got a problem. You've got to take it all back out again. Anyway, I'm going to put some of this compound on the thread here, on about an inch in area. And by the time you're all done when you're assembling it, the whole stud will be really coated. And I'll show you why, or how it gets done. But anyway, I want to make sure that the threads are protected so that everything is going to slip. This is like a slipping agent right now is what I'm making. And, and anyway, uh, then I'm going to take a rag, one of my, my older rags here, and just because I put so much onto the, uh, uh, the serrated area here, just, just run your rag around it. Get the big bulk of it off. And that's going to be right into the serrations, right where you want it. That way there you won't have it all gunked up all over the place and everything. Leave the threads alone. Leave the threads completely alone. Now when you go to put your wheel on, Try to find the area where the two shoes meet here. Uh, and that's where you're going to assemble, of course. You're going to put the stud in, 
You're going to rotate it a little bit, hold it both in the front and the back, and try and find where it seats in the right. Turn it back just a little bit so it's in the middle of the area of the two brake shoes. Take a three pound hammer and you're just going to barely tap this in. The only reason is just so it don't fall off. And don't, say, don't let anybody tell you they can drive it in from this angle. That's BS too. Oh, you probably can, but I guarantee you that stud is probably all damaged. I guarantee you that it's, uh, it's not in straight and everything. What I'm just doing now is just enough to seat the, the bolt in there and the stud in there in the first place. And, and instead of having to see how I do, well, I'll, I'll do a couple of them, so you, you get the better the idea of exactly what I'm doing. I, I think you're seeing it now. Okay, so I got one, and I, I cleaned off the serration, started in the hole, rotated around until it almost like the locks in. There you go. Did you see it? It almost fell in, but it won't go very far. And just give it a light tap with your hammer. Just enough so that the stud don't fall off. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to have you uh, watch the whole thing as I'm, of what I'm doing, because it's going to be too boring and it's going to take too long. The next thing you got to do is say, well, okay, now how am I going to pull them in with a gun? Well, what you're going to do... Okay, if you don't have these parts laying around, go around some old shops, assembly shops. Oops, I don't want to put this on here. And uh, tell them what you're doing. Find a washer. First of all, I'm going to use a washer to go on, on here. I'm going, to put, I'm going to put compound on, a, on both the surfaces of the washer. It's a spatial, like you might say. But so, so it slips around when the gun is tightening. So you don't damage your wheel here. So, okay, that's, that's on. And as you see, this is a big washer. So I put a flat on there so that it, uh, the washer won't be hitting onto the surface, the right, right in this area right there, there's there's a radius, oh, maybe about an eighth inch radius in there. And if you put this the other way, the, it don't sit in there right. So if you put a flat on there, uh, it, it you don't have a problem where it's going to be cocked or anything. You want to make sure your studs go in straight. That's what you're trying to do. It's going to be easier for the gun and everything else of the assembly. Okay, now the next thing you're going to do is say, okay, now I still need some more area where, uh, whoops, that's wrong one here. Before I put a nut on the drawing, I'm going to use an old nut, but my best old nut, I, I'm going to put a nut on there, which, uh, which is oversized. Uh, again, you got to, uh, when you go to a shop, find a nut as close to the diameter of the stud as you can, so when you're drawing it in, the stud will be, in, it'll be drawing in straight. If you get too big oversized, well, then it's going to be off center. So try to get one of the sides that just barely fits on there. So I'm going to put this where it belongs now. Again, coat that surface. Make sure this surface here is all coated. Okay, now you've got two slippery surfaces there, right? Then I'm going to take the nut. I took the best nut. It didn't wobble or nothing like that there on the old studs. Put some compound on that surface. And the best thing to try to do is don't run it down with the gun right off the bat because uh, you don't want that washer to spin around that you got in there in the first place. But if it starts to turn, well, it can't go very far because the flat's going to hit on the radius and then that's, that's be the end of it. So now, before you use a gun, I want you to get in the habit of, if you want to uh, know how messy that stuff is, boy, it's hard to get it off. But have your... Your portable sink with you. You see how gunky my hands are with these gloves on now. Just imagine if that was on my hands. So I'm going to use my uh, portable sink. Just rub it on the stud, on, on the gloves. I have a rag. I'm just using that old work rag, but you can see. I just want you to see how good that damn Dawn soap is, and it takes that stuff all off. That anti sees. And it'll take it off your hands too, if you get some on there. Okay, so now I'm going to put my, my other earplug in there, because I want to be sure I heard myself when I was talking to you. Now let me think for a second, is there anything else I want to tell you before I start drawing that in? I'm going to start drawing it in, and as soon as it starts getting really tight, remember i got a small, uh, small air tank. 
So as soon as I start drawing it in and it starts getting tight, I'm going to stop. I'm going to put all of the studs in until they all go to almost the same distance. And you can see right here, they're around three eighths of an inch before that stud is bottomed down all the way. So I'm going to draw them all up to the same position all the way around. And then I'm going to, uh, again, start from the beginning. And then I'm going to have to, I'll show you how I have to do it with the gun and a small air tank. Don't tell me you can't do it because I'll prove to you that you can. Uh, but it's, it take, it'll take you almost all day to do this job. But it's worth it. You save yourself a couple hundred dollars, maybe more. And it's going to cost you $200 just for the parts. So try to save yourself money here and, uh, and uh, do a good job. And I'm sure it's going to be better than what most of the people that would do it on the outside because I think going to be as careful as what you are. And I guarantee you, none of these studs are going to be damaged. The one that I took out, the heads of a lot of them were all damaged from being hit with a hammer and everything else. And, oh, crap. Well, anyway, let's see what we can do with the gun here. Now, what I've got is a three-quarter inch drive gun made in Japan. I've had this gun over 20 years now. Made in Japan. I got it from Montgomery Wards. It was a craft. No, I, I got it from uh, Sears. It's a craftsman. It's a three-quarter inch impact uh, wrench. The boy, this baby's got some guts. And like I said, it's made in Japan. I love it. And I'm glad I didn't sell it. So anyway, I got it so it's going to the... Okay, I got it going to the uh, right position. I, I should put my other gloves on, but for, for purpose of uh, showing you this here, then I'm going to put the other studs all in. I'm going to get all gunked up anyway. But I just want to show you how I'm going to get this stud in. And then I'll, uh, I'll come back later and show you how I draw finish drawing them in. But anyway, I just want you to see how I do it. And watch, all the parts will rotate nice and easy. And then all of a sudden they'll start getting tight because that stud gets really tight and going into the hole. And uh, here we go. Now I'm not sure where my tank is, my air tank is. It might be just ready to kick on, so we'll just see. I might have to wait for it to build up for a minute. Keep giving it short bursts like that. Oh, I got a problem here. All right. Don't like that. That, uh, that washer turned around on me, and it didn't do that before. <laughs> well, I guess, let's, well, it appears to be sitting flat after all. So give it about four bursts, and then stop. Give it a moment. You're not, you're not, you're not overusing a gun then. Now, if you've got a big, you got a compressor that puts out 100 TP, 120 PSI at all times, well, then you don't have to do that. Oh, the other one loosening up on me here as I pound it in. Let's see, we got to find the center again. So what you do when uh, you hit it in like that, you might have to go back and draw that in a little bit. Now, these parts are covered with a gunk, all right? And you just barely put them on. You barely put them on. Take your, your little tool here, your little brush, start right from the beginning. Put some gunk on the on the washer as it goes around, on that surface here as it goes around, on the nut, the washer the spacer nut, on this other side of the nut. You can rotate it around, not even have to move the uh, the brush. Now, put it on your drawdown nut. Now every surface that's going to be touching each other is uh has got lubrication. Okay. Now, okay, here we go again. Check to make sure your space is flat and not hitting against that radius. It looks good.
that's as far as I'm gonna go right now because I want to put them all in. I don't want to waste time uh, or hold your hold you uh, unnecessarily uh, on the video watching it. But uh, that's going to be the procedure what I'm gonna do all the way around. I'm gonna tap them all in first, then I'm gonna just draw them in just a little bit, and then I'm gonna concentrate on one at a time and draw it completely in. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you. I'll see you next time.